What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how I turned a $170 pile of parts into a functioning CNC controller. Check it out. When you're building a CNC machine, the controller box is pretty much the least important thing you're going to make. So, I don't have to bother engineering anything, I just need to slap it together with some cheap plywood and spray paint it black and we're good to go. While optimizing the layout for all the electronic components isn't strictly necessary, it's something I wanted to do first to clean up the wiring but also because I might be adding stuff to the box later so I wanted to make sure it's all laid out cleanly and I can add stuff and have plenty of room later on. Once I fashioned a handy set of mounting brackets, I was able to go ahead and mount the power supply and then we're getting ready to wire everything up. Now one thing you're probably wondering is how you're going to get the wire from your house to this power supply because it didn't come with any cords. Now fortunately you're able to just take a power cord from a PlayStation or a TV or just about anything like that that you're not using anymore and cut off the end. Wiring these is extraordinarily simple. All you have to do is unscrew the screws that go directly into the contacts. The green goes in the ground, the white goes to the neutral, and then the black goes to the line. Most power supplies are going to have two different selections for voltage because not every house runs off of the same voltage. Since mine runs off of 115, I'm going to select 115, and you're going to want to select whatever you're going to be using. So the power for the controller comes directly from the computer that we're plugging into via USB. So this power supply we're wiring up is just for the drivers. Since we have four drivers, we're going to need at least four hot and four negative wires going into the power supply. And fortunately, there's room for six. So we're going to be good to go. So we got all of our drivers wired up. So the one in the middle here, this is all for the motors. So none of the motors are wired up. And you'll probably notice that there's a whole lot of empty space over here. And there's a couple reasons that I did that. One is I'm probably going to install other stuff. Like I'm likely going to have a spindle relay somewhere in here. I'm probably going to run the wiring for the motors down a track here so these break out like in a similar location so it's all pretty neat and I'd like to mount a fan into this box too because I can imagine these drivers get pretty hot sometimes now this looks complicated this looks kind of tough this wiring is really about as simple as it gets as long as you are able to follow the instructions which are crappy I'll admit but if you can just follow the instructions run one wire at a time. It might not look the same, but functionally, it'll be identical. Now, if you're absolutely afraid of wires and this is not the route you wanna go, you actually have other options. So this is actually the controller for my CNC machine that I've been using for about a year now. And you can see it's quite a bit bigger of a chip, but all of the drivers are built into it. These capacitors are all their own driver. And all that wiring is just for the drivers. There's not even any motors installed here. So functionally, this box and that unit are exactly the same thing. You can see that there's almost no wiring here. So obviously, if wiring is going to be the thing that stops you from building this project, this is probably the unit to go with. Now, you're probably thinking, well, what's the difference between the two? Price difference? There almost isn't a price difference. This one's about the same as the other one. And functionality. So technically, these units are the same. They're both TB6560s. This one's just a five axis with external drivers and this is a four axis with internal drivers. So, like I said, if the wiring is going to be the part that bothers you, then go for the simple one. But it shouldn't be that way because the wiring on this, sure, anybody can do it. It might not look the same, but if you run the wires from the right place to the right place, it's going to work exactly the same. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work. So don't let that be the reason that you don't finish your project. Now the software that you're looking at right here is called Mach 3. Mach 3 is kind of an industry standard. If you're going to have a homemade CNC machine, you're pretty much always going to have Mach 3. This is what goes on your computer. This is what controls your CNC controller basically. And so you're able to upload files onto this and operate them through this interface and then your machine's able to run them. Now setting up Mach 3 is going to be specific from controller to controller. So I'm just going to show you guys how I set up my controller so you at least have an idea of about how I do it. Under configure ports and pins, you have to change the kernel speed to 35,000 hertz. Uh, you have to have port one enabled and usually the port address is gonna be right but you definitely wanna make sure it's right according to your instructions. And then you hop over to the motor outputs tab and all of the numbers here for X, Y, Z and A axis are correct per my instructions. But it is very clear in the instructions that you have to tinker with direction active low and step low active 
because the manufacturer of the controller isn't exactly sure what's going to work, which is pretty unfortunate. So if it doesn't work the first try, you have to click around and try different combinations in order to get it to work. And usually when you're clicking around, you can hear little clicks happening in the machine, and that might be a good indication that you wanna just go ahead and hit apply okay and see if you can get your motors to turn. So straight up, both of my CNC kits that I've bought so far have been inexpensive, have been from China, and they've had horrible, horrible instructions. Easily my biggest complaint. Have a look at the uh, typical wiring case. This is for the new one, obviously. This is obviously done on paint. And if you wire it up like this, it doesn't work. So I can tell that everything is mostly right uh, until I try to actually move the motor. First of all, that's not the noise that it's supposed to make. And second of all, it's supposed to actually move. And it's just uh, pretty much fighting itself, it seems like. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is swap a couple of wires around because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, mostly because the wire colors that are on the motor don't actually match what's on the wiring diagram. So that's why I'm pretty sure that's the problem. But I'll do that and then we'll see where we're at. Of course, I was able to get it to work by changing the configuration. And go figure, the configuration that worked wasn't even close to the wiring diagram. If you were to get a cheap CNC kit off of eBay, it's probably going to work. But it's going to take a lot of patience and it's going to take a little bit of know-how and maybe a little bit of research. So what I think you should do is not get one. I think you should get one with a USB port so you can just skip that whole parallel guy because that's kind of the biggest problem. You have to get a computer that has a parallel port and it's really frustrating to find one that works. Plus, I think if you get a little bit more expensive controller, you're going to get support out of the deal. You're going to be able to call somebody and say, hey, walk me through this and they're going to be able to help you out. Uh, I'm not going to be able to call the guys I got this thing from because they are not going to speak English, and if they do, it's going to be about as good as the instructions. Well, I think it's official. Now I have to actually build the CNC machine. So that was my part one video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully I gave you information that you're actually going to be able to use later on. If there's anything specific you want to know about this, or that you want to know about building the machine in general, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'll see if I can answer your questions for you. And Hopefully I'm going to be able to do the next videos soon. It's going to be a long process. I'm still waiting on parts, but I'm going to do as I'm able to complete things. I'm going to go ahead and upload the videos and show you guys. And then when everything's done, I'm going to go ahead and compile it for the people who weren't paying attention throughout the whole process. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. And thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.